Hi. Uh, sorry for the big life perspective here. I still don't have a good way of setting up my stuff. I'm still in my living room uh, because I haven't had the money to to remodel the the, the house as as I want with, with the big working room where I have all my stuff. So sorry about that. <clears throat> Today, um, I'm gonna cut a picture in here. Um, I have, I, I already have set up my my uh, server management uh, status board uh, where I monitor my home server and my my uh, big server in the internet. Um, but. Um, yeah, I always have to go to the website to manage the services and stuff and I have the same problem uh, when I'm live streaming I have uh, the the option to switch the uh, between different views on my numpad and every time I have to type in a number I accidentally do it in on my numpad so uh, I'm switching the screens around and I want a central console uh, where I can can uh, do basic uh, server management stuff uh, like starting services, stopping services, that stuff, and and manage my um, my live stream session and uh, also do some some basic. Uh, input output for my um, home automation stuff so um, I decided uh, in order to do that I, I only need a few um, uh, uh, basic se seven di uh, seven segment displays and, and the keypad of some sort and um, yeah, I, I since since the the Apollo anniversaries are coming up, I'm building something similar to this key, uh, the display and keyboard stuff. Uh, it won't do much on its own. It's it's just a keyboard display that sends stuff over the network to my uh, home automation system. <clears throat> As a base, I'm gonna use. That old switching box, ignore the, the thingamajig, um, I'm gonna use that uh, to build in some electronics here and hot glue the display up here and maybe add some basic status LEDs as well on, on this side. Um, for a keyboard, I bought this uh, rather cheap. I should maybe unpack it so you can see this basic uh, numpad thing, a magic USB, of course. Haven't even tested it, but it should work. Um, and while well, the the digits will stay uh, as they are. Um, I'm gonna repurpose all all the other buttons for 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 other stuff uh, like mode switching and and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> as for electronics, basically I had two options. Um, I could use a Raspberry Pi. I have quite a few laying around, um, <clears throat> which is good for the network side of things but as I already know uh, Raspberry Pi is very dodgy when it comes to to timing so we might have like an SPI problem or whatever uh, for that I want to use an Arduino but of course the Arduino is complete shit when it comes to network. Yes, you can buy a network module, but you you can't do encryption and doing network without encryption even in a local network. It's just stupid and everyone who does it should be 
sh I should get a lifetime ban uh, on internet. So uh, <clears throat> for that, so let's see where do I have it. Still haven't unpacked the stuff actually. Come on, come on. Um, wait a moment. So we have an Arduino Mega, um, which, okay, let's push this back. Uh, yeah, we have an Arduino Mega because we have lots of input output we might or might not use. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but uh, at least we're future proof. And with that comes the, um, the, the, where is it? This thing, it's, it's one of those development boards. That's also incredibly shitty to open. Um, this is rather big, I'm afraid. I, I'm not sure if I can use it in here. I have to, we'll, we'll open that and we have a look. But it comes with this practical uh, screw terminal, so we don't have to solder on on the thing itself uh, for the most part. So so we, it's it's quite a bit more modular. And if I at some point don't want to use that thing anymore or I take some stuff out, I can reuse use the pins without desoldering and whatever. Uh, we'll have to see uh, how it fits because we also need one of my old Raspberry Pis. Um, oh, just unscrew them. Uh, th this was uh, was a Linux Day demo with with. Uh, um, with uh, using 10 Raspberry Pis for distributed computing stuff but yeah the, the mounting plates don't really work every time you transport it all the screws come loose but uh, we got quite a few of those still around so that's gonna be our network side uh, Nice that it starts to corrode even if, if even if it was never in any humid place. But oh well, it's a Raspberry Pi, so we can't expect too much. Um, we already seen the, the keyboard um, for display. We have. A number of those things that uh, I have to use my teeth for opening that um, seven segment displays, uh, eight, eight digits, and we have um, three of those modules. Four of those modules, sorry, um, which are gonna be somewhere around here let's just try this out um, we may use two we may use four I don't know um, I'll have to see that it's it's just a one-time project so I'm not gonna be too uh, how can I put it? Um, I'm not gonna spend too much time making it beautiful and nice and, and yeah, something like that that gets hot glued on here, maybe. Um, I probably use free. 
and I also want to use that thing that's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight by eight display, um, uh, LED display, something like uh, that. Um, yeah, well, I'll have to see how I can mount it, but since it's uh, same on, on, on both sides, it doesn't matter if I mount it here or, or this way. It just something like that and then put some status LEDs LED and a label LED and the label and so on uh, on, on this side um, so that's gonna be what, what I'm gonna build I'm not gonna film the whole process but let's just take a look uh, inside the box um, yes. okay are these quarter turn spring loaded screws so a uh, quick quick open that's good yeah we have to get all that electronic stuff or electric stuff out here it's it's one of those old thingamajigs that uh, I'm, I'm not using anymore but when we get this stuff out here we can probably let's see if this will fit in theory it will fit and then it will fit a raspberry pi on the other side and we have all these ports here uh, these pre-cut ports here to run all the wires out so we might not even have to use uh, to use a drill because uh, yeah um, well we'll see but yeah get basically we have to get only uh, we can try this already how does one open these screws uh, or are there screws or what um have no idea ah those are push boards um, and I probably don't have anything to push them but let's just take a look okay um first of all start again okay um this is the layout I decided for uh, for the box itself inside the box I didn't have play, uh, a good place to also put in the Raspberry Pi so that goes in a separate box that I have to 3D print or something uh, luckily I do have a 3D printer um, but it's it's not important that it's in here it's just basically this this is just to hold all the stuff together for the display um, so uh, I'm running the USB cord here and I will also uh, have just a small board maybe even only part of it uh, where a 5 volt comes in from an external supply um, and then goes to the Arduino, goes to the uh, external display and also goes uh, to the Raspberry Pi in, in the separate box um, yeah I, I can't even, maybe I can, can fit it you know like this I have to look into it maybe I can even fit it in the box but I have 
have to use a small separate board so I can solder on all the power connectors. So, um, but most likely I will put the, the Arduino outside because then this becomes just a modular display that I can, you know, control via USB. Uh, via USB. Uh, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, maybe I I put the the Raspberry Pi, you know, like this or something, and then just uh, glue it in place. Or I'm not sure. I have to see how much space all the other cabling takes up but that's not a problem um, as for the display layout let me pull it here this isn't uh, soldered or glued or anything that's just for me to visualize um, I will have uh, Three um, of those displays. I'm not sure. I don't need the fourth. Basically, uh, this will dis uh, display the uh, more or less the, the program we're in. The whatever we're doing, like. I can display letters and numbers, but basically 10 programs should be alright. Uh, depending on, on what I'm doing, this is basically the memory address slash selector. This displays uh, what memory address we're gonna change and it's sort of virtual memory. Basically it's just addressing some stuff that uh, the Arduino itself only basically gets um, uh, via serial uh, what to display on uh, on what thing and uh, send these bytes to this device and and you're done. Um, and we also have a small uh, distributor board because I'm gonna run. Where do I have it? Not here, apparently. Ah, uh, yeah, here. Just one of these cables, and then it gets soldered here, and then the, the individual wires go to. The various displays. Um, and basically this should be the memory address, this should be the current value and this is the input field. So if I put in a new value it will go in there and only if I press like a, a special key then it gets put in the real address sent back to the, the Raspberry Pi and Raspberry Pi does all the, the logic thing uh, over the network and then I have um, a field of, of LEDs that um, send um, or basically I'm sending it sort of serial here with a 74HC595 basically it's serial in parallel out and I have two of those that I can daisy chain um, and uh, here I'll print the, the names of the alarms or whatever the, the LED, LED is supposed to mean um, I also have uh, a buzzer, uh, which basically is, is the same as an LED output, only it's a buzzer, so uh, 
if there is a problem it can send the buzzer and I'll probably mount one of these uh, tiny switches sort of uh, um, master alarm off I don't know yet but uh, I probably put it in if I use it I use it if not then not but as soon as I hot glue everything on I can't uh, add switches afterwards so I'm, I'm gonna add it right away um, I mean I might just add the fourth display wherever I've put it uh, probably on my desk uh, or maybe don't know um, no here it uh, here somewhere it, I have it somewhere I don't know but I have four of those maybe I put in the fourth then I had I have to run a line from the second cable here but that should shouldn't be a problem because I need the chip select for each um, uh, but I might not yeah maybe display a clock something like that um, clock and how long I've been streaming that maybe yeah I've, I've, I'm gonna edit anyway and then I have the Raspberry Pi in, in housing and, and my keyboard so this one gets propped up and then I have the the keyboard like I can select stuff I can switch between uh, changing the, the, the program and changing the address and changing the value this well probably these buttons here uh, or one of those because I don't really need them the way they are um, maybe I use plus minus and backspace then I ha have these pr buttons to change which field I want to change and those for some extra stuff I'm not sure yet um, but yeah let's get on with the stuff I'll be back after soldering